Sarah Huckabee Sanders, of course, is uh, President Trump's secretary, uh, or excuse me, press secretary. And um, she tweeted something over the weekend trying to get Gina Haspel confirmed as the new CIA head. So Mike Pompeo was the director of the CIA. He's now the secretary of state, which is terrifying, by the way. This guy's pro-torture, never met a war he didn't like. Apparently he believes in the rapture and he's a legit hardcore fundamentalist Christian. These guys should be nowhere near any position of power. Never mind being secretary of state. So um, in the process of trying to get Gina Haspel confirmed to be the CIA head, look at what Sarah Huckabee Sanders said. There is no one more qualified to be the first woman to lead the CIA than 30 plus years CIA veteran Gina Haspel. Any Democrat who claims to support women's empowerment and our national security but opposes her nomination is a total hypocrite. See, this is what we've been warning you about. Now, I got a lot of shit from people when I mentioned during the 2016 election that Hillary Clinton was using identity politics as a shield, as a mask, to deflect and obfuscate. And now the chickens are coming home to roost, and you're seeing exactly why this is a problem. Because now the Republicans are doing this bullshit. And, see, the whole idea behind it is, take something that's inconsequential, like somebody's gender, or somebody's race, which shouldn't matter in a world where we care about equality, right? Everybody should be treated the same. We're all viewed the same uh, in the eyes of the law. But you take those factors about a human being and you try to use that to override genuine bad policy positions and odious ideas that said person has. And so when Hillary Clinton went out there and did the I'm with her slogan and um, decided on election night that she was going to be in the Jacob Javits Center so that when she won the election, which they thought was inevitable, she'd be able to say, we've broken the glass ceiling because I'm a woman and I'm in this position of power. And what reasonable people were saying the entire time is, listen, gender is irrelevant. What are you going to do for the country policy-wise? And there are a lot of people who value bullshit characteristics or traits about somebody, identity characteristics, so much that it overrides all the other facts about them. So Bernie bros were called Bernie bros, and were, people said they're sexist because they said, Hey, listen, man, I'm going to have a hard time voting for somebody who voted for the Iraq war. It's an offensive war against a country that didn't attack us. It's an illegal war. Minimum 200,000 civilians died. I'm not okay with that. She voted for the Patriot Act. You know, NSA spying out the wazoo, collecting all of our metadata. Forget your constitutional rights. They don't exist anymore. She's for outsourcing. She was for deregulation of Wall Street. So she is massively corrupt. She takes so much money from Wall Street. So when... So-called Bernie bros pointed out substantive policy disagreements. The reaction from people who are just bathing in identity politics was, I guess you're sexist. You don't want the first woman to be president. Well, now you're seeing almost like a comic book example of that philosophy and that mentality. And now you're seeing many people who use the same bullshit identity politics realizing why that's a problem. Because now you have Sarah Huckabee Sanders saying, Hey, we picked a woman to be the head of the CIA. I guess you hate women. I guess you're sexist if you're not in favor of her. And why are we really against her? We'll take a look at this from The Intercept. So this is talking about Gina Haspel. She was directly involved in its controversial interrogation program and had an extensive role in torturing detainees. Even more troubling, she had run a secret prison in Thailand, part of the CIA's network of black sites, where two detainees were subjected to waterboarding and other harsh techniques. 
The Senate Intelligence Committee's report on torture also detailed the central role she played in the particularly gruesome torture of detainee Abu Zubaydah. Beyond all that, she played a vital role in the destruction of interrogation videotapes that showed the torture of detainees both at the black site she ran and other secret agency locations. She was directly involved in torture. She did the torture. Then she destroyed the evidence after the fact. That's why people are opposed to Gina Haspel. It's not because she has a vagina. That people are like, oh, you know, I was going to be for the torture and war criminal, but now I'm not because she's a woman. If it was a male torture and war criminal man, I would have been for her. So this is, this is why that line of argument is bullshit. So listen, does that mean that, you know, you're not allowed to be happy if you get, you know, like we had the first black president, President Obama. Or you're not allowed to be happy when we eventually get the first female president? No, you're allowed to be happy over that. But how do you value that and weigh that against the policy positions? I would be happy to get the first female president if that first female president is at least halfway decent on the policy issues. You know? And a lot of the people who they said were sexist Bernie bros voted for Jill Stein, another woman. <laughs> So if, if, for example, you know, Elizabeth Warren became president, while I have my disagreements with her, I would be happy because she's half decent on the policy stuff and she happens to be female. So I would say, wonderful, it's historic. But if Sarah Palin became president, I wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't care that it was a, a, a woman who, who won because... Every one of her policy positions is genuinely odious. So to have the identity override the fucking reality of what she's going to do for the country is such a misalignment of priorities that it's honestly laughable. So that's why you have to deprioritize identity politics. Because it, it is, it will never not be used as a shield, as a mask, as a way to deflect and obfuscate from real issues that affect real people, okay? That's why it's a problem. Because if you prioritize identity over policy substance, then, yeah, you, then Sarah Huckabee Sanders is right in that scenario. If that's your priorities, listen, identity over everything else, well then, yeah, go ahead, vote for Gina Haspel. She is a woman. She is a woman. woman. But most people slam on the brakes at a certain point. They go, whoa, 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 wait, what? What? No, wait, she's a torturer, she's a war criminal. Right, right, right. That same philosophy is why nobody should have called fucking so-called Bernie bros sexist. Because across the board, they had substantive policy disagreements with her. Bernie Sanders describes himself as a feminist. The most liberal senator of our lifetimes who describes himself as a feminist, people supported Bernie Sanders, and then they were called sexist when they didn't fall in line for Hillary Clinton, when Hillary's a war criminal, because she supported the Iraq war and voted for the Patriot Act, and was for virtually every intervention, and orchestrated the Libya intervention, where uh, he was killed, and then bragged about it. We came, we saw, he died. So that's why, um, that's why there are many people on the left who are critical of identity politics. And now you see the chickens are coming home to roost for all those establishment-minded Democrats, the Hillary-supporting Democrats, who now they're getting the same arguments that were used, that they used against Bernie people. Now the Republicans are using it against them. So, if they want to be honest and they want to be consistent, well, you did prioritize identity over policy last time, so go ahead, prioritize identity over policy this time. And what would happen is you would be affirming a far right wing war criminal torturer to be the head of the CIA. So, um, or you could stand uh, where I stand, which is policy matters above all else. I don't give a flying fuck. I'll vote, I'll vote for a woman. I'll vote for somebody of another race. I'll vote for a trans person. I'll vote for anybody who stands for my value system in terms of policy positions. If you're for Medicare for all, if you're for free college, if you're for a living wage, if you're for ending the wars, if you're for a new New Deal, I will vote for you in a heartbeat. I don't care about your identity, and that's the position that everybody on the left should take.